I'll get also one. Um, I'm going to have a quite a different perspective than the talks we had this morning, because this morning it was really about the uh, help desk situations, and I'm really going to talk about well the audit uh, side of process mining and uh, the way it can support audit to get uh, more efficient audits. Um, I will start with an introduction, uh, tell a little bit about the approach we use at KPMG to process mining. Um, then I will uh, go into uh, three deep dives with the case studies um, and tell something about the lessons learned and uh, what we're planning to do this year and uh, in the coming <coughs> years uh, with the use of process mining in uh, the audit. Um, I'm working at KPMG, um, risk consulting, IT advisory, finance services. It's quite a mouthful. Um, we started about a year and a half ago with uh, some pilots within process mining, uh, which took probably uh, the last year to uh, uh, get, give us a real view on what we could do, what what we could do within uh, all of the process mining, and uh, we did it at around seven clients right now. Um, one of the uh, things we discussed during our workshop and uh, with Bill well, during the lunch uh, is uh, the fact that it's not really, and well, and discussed also, it's not really uh, practical to use it for ERP systems at the moment. Um, you know, as I said, I'm working in financial services and one of the advantages from the financial services is they really don't use a uh, ERP system. Well, they do use it for uh, their office supplies, but they don't use it for their um, uh, primary process. So for the primary processes, they usually have um, applications they build themselves, uh, which are most of the time legacy, so they're hard to audit, um, but they use a standard SQL database. So we can quite easily uh, gather the information from these SQL databases and use it in our process mining. Um, then our approach. Um, auditors are quite reluctant to change most of the time. Um, they are doing something they already do for <coughs> 10, 20 years. So why would we change? Because we is working and we never, we have a re never really have a problem. So we really needed to uh, come up with an approach to show our auditors that this is something that will really help them benefit and get a more efficient <coughs> and more effective audit. Um, so in our approach, we um, the first thing we do is go to uh, the auditor, which is, um, well, it's maybe because I don't think everybody here knows how the process goes with auditing. Um, Within KPMG, you have the auditors uh, and advisory. We're from advisory, uh, but we uh, are giving some support to our audit colleagues um, in the financial statement audit. Uh, we're checking the IT systems because nowadays, actually, the complete uh, financial statement is based on what is in the systems, and the auditors need to know that those systems are well configured so they, well, not everybody can change or make uh, some. Uh, new uh, bills and pay them to themselves. <coughs> so we go to those auditors um, and they, well, in a discussion with them and our clients, we look at what is a relevant process to uh, explore with process mining. During the selection, we uh, look at, well, what kind of database is used, what other steps, is it actually an automated process with a <coughs> workflow or uh, are there many manual steps which are outside the system because well, then you can really use process mining. After this uh, selection process, we um, sit down with the client and, uh, well, most of the time, and especially in the case we did last year, it's quite easy to get the data because, well, it is a SQL database and you need to know which uh, columns you need and it's just a simple download. Then we do an, uh, first an analysis on the data itself because we noticed this year that, well, in some cases the uh, data we get from the log files is not that good. So uh, dates are missing, a person who did it is missing. Uh, but I will get back to that uh, later on. Uh, after this uh, analysis, we uh, put the log file to Disco 
and uh, which generates the process map. Uh, during this, uh, well, when we get the process map, we uh, go back to the auditor and we discuss the results with them because they actually know really how the process should work because they've been coming a few years at the client and they, then we look at what are exceptions and what do we need to discuss with the client because not everything has to be evaluated with the client because, well, not everything is an exception. Well, after the evaluation with the client, um, we do some reporting of findings, findings uh, to uh, the auditor as well as the other team. Um, as I said, we really need to uh, convince the auditor first uh, that it was uh, beneficial to them to use process mining. Um, and what we have here is actually the five biggest benefits for the uh, auditor because um, it's fact based. You use the actual data instead of the sample. Um, I believe uh, somebody this morning told about it, that as well. Um, I believe you said about 50 or 100 cases. In my opinion, well, as far as I know, uh, it's actually 25 or 40, depending on the low or high risk in a process. Um, so if you get, let's say, 10,000 cases, normally you look at 25 or 40 cases. Now you can look at all the cases and look at, well, sometimes you still have to look at 20 or 40 cases, but you can look at the cases that are wrong, or look, at least look like they are wrong. Um, then uh, application controls. Uh, application controls are controls that are uh, system driven. So let's say uh, someone enters a contract uh, in the system, uh, a second person from the same department has to review that uh, uh, contract and it cannot be done by the same person. And, well, that's, that's in short what application controls. Uh, with the use of process mining, you can test this application control very easy because you can use the filters to set it well, uh, to give the, to show the cases where they didn't happen. And so you, instead of that, you just check it once because an application control, you only have to test once because it's in the system. And if it doesn't, didn't, the system didn't change, the application control shouldn't have changed. And then risk identification. Um, due to the fact that you use the actual process map and not the uh, ID that the customer has that how the processes work, you can actually see where the real risks are. So uh, a client, well, if the customer says, these are our risks um, because this is how, it's, how our process uh, flows, that doesn't really mean that it is really where the risks are because sometimes you see uh, when you use process mining that the uh, cases, well, deviate from the uh, expected path and so the risk identification can really help. And then the focus on deviations, as I said, uh, you can look at all the cases and take those cases which are uh, actually looking to go wrong. And the visual, visual representation, um, it really helps and uh, especially nowadays because um, we got uh, new rules and regulations saying that we have to uh, change from clients every seven years. Um, the first year you get at the client you have actually no idea how the process is working. So. You need to talk to people and you, well, actually you have to trust them that they tell you that it, that is how the process <coughs> works. With the use of uh, process mining, you can actually see how the process works. And you can also uh, immediately show the client, well, you say this, but we see this. Um, could you please explain this? Then, um, after this, we really had uh, convinced the auditors that they should use us. But then you also have the audit team, which is the client at which we prefer we perform the audit tasks. Um, with, when they are also um, well, budgets are always under stress. So it was really important to stress the fact that it would be more efficient and fewer resources would be needed. And well, we're really um, living up to that because. Now you just have to talk to the administrator 
the IT administrator and ask them for, well, we need these uh, columns from the database. And that's actually all you have to do in the first place. And then when you get exceptions, you can go back and say, well, I need some more time with your people, but uh, it's very cost efficient. Um, and for them, it's also good to know to what the actual process is, where their real, uh, their real uh, risks are, and uh, where the process deviates from what they expect. Uh, then to the case studies. Um, I'm gonna talk about three case studies. Two are in the leasing business, one is in the mortgage business. Um, the first one is leasing. Um, in this case, we uh, did a, a check on, um, well, the client did a, a new system implementation two years ago. And the reason that they did this implementation was because they were active in three countries, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, Belgium and uh, Luxembourg. And in these three countries, the processes were completely different and they couldn't really uh, audit the situation and they really wanted to make everything efficient. Uh, that's why they wanted to do a uh, system implementation to harmonize everything and make it one big whole process. Um, challenges in this, uh, in this harmonization were that um, the rules and regulations in uh, well, as well, the Netherlands as Belgium and Luxembourg are slightly different. Uh, you get your taxes, uh, which are different, uh, uh, credit rules. Um, with the use of process mining, uh, these challenges could easily be overcome because you could look at the process and see, okay, I need to, for every rule and regulation, you can see, okay, I need to do these steps and are they coming back in my complete process? Um, another challenge was the shared back office because um, due to uh, the, well, the Luxembourg office is not that big so the Netherlands uh, is doing some of their businesses um, and due to that Luxembourg office is not that big they also have uh, problems in their organization setup to ensure segregation of duties um, which is that uh, people have to check on each other and uh, so then we got the data from them, and which resulted in these pictures. With uh, to the left, you got the Netherlands in the middle, Belgium, and to the right, Luxembourg. As you can see, these are not quite the same processes. Um, the idea was that everything look, should look as it does in the Netherlands. So that's uh, the one here on the left. Um, I'm going to go and pick one of the uh, instances. Well, as you can see in the Netherlands, uh, quite a lot are going to the uh, completed. Uh, not all, but quite a lot. In Belgium, well, pretty much everything is going through completed, and in Luxembourg, pretty much nothing. So that was something we said, well, that's kind of strange. Um, so they looked into that and they said, well, uh, we've checked it and uh, that it came back actually to the organizational setup and uh, the shared back office because uh, in the Netherlands uh, the uh, back office does the credit check because they don't have enough people to do that in Luxembourg and um, that's outsourced to the Netherlands and that's why it's not shown in well apparently seven special cases were done in Luxembourg but the rest is sent to the Netherlands to be done there um, and well, some more of the results. Um, management gained some insights in the effectiveness of the process. Um, as you could see, could see it's uh, well, quite a different process, but they actually could see, okay, this is where we're missing stuff, this is what is going right. Um, we also could check uh, if the controls were implemented right um, and give them some assurance about how they uh, could of how good the uh, uh, controls were and about system uh, configuration uh, which shows that uh, although the process uh, look very different that actually well all the controls were performed due to uh, the shared back office and uh, well we did find some pro process de deviations uh, which we discussed and uh, some of them were really deviations um, since it's client data, I can't really go into specifics about it, but 
most of the time it's just uh, that they can explain it. Then the second case uh, was also in releasing, it was uh, specifically on control testing. In the finance statement audit, um, the, it's actually not one case, but it's, well, we did it at several leasing clients uh, in the past year, so it's more a uh, yeah, congregation of all the things we found in these. And the financial auditors said, well, we want to have some more additional insight in the uh, process flows, in the systems, uh, how everything is working, because sometimes uh, it was difficult to, uh, well, the documentation at the clients wasn't uh, enough to give them the assurance that they needed. Um, the challenges here were that although um, it were all clients in the Netherlands, they pretty much all use different IT systems, so they have their own leasing software, which uh, was uh, sometimes a little bit more difficult to uh, understand and to get the right data, but uh, eventually we got it from all of them. Um, then the degree of automation. Um, as I said before, uh, process mining really needs a workflow which is automated. Uh, at one of the client cases we found that uh, one check really wasn't performed. Um, so we went back to them and said, well, uh, we see here this check is never performed and it's one of your most important checks. And then they told us that someone was actually every day walking around with a paper to get an autograph from the manager, which was filed and was never registered in the uh, IT system. And then the access rights, um, due to uh, the size of companies, sometimes it's, uh, people need uh, extra access rights so they uh, can perform their tasks. Um, sometimes it happens that people get the wrong access rights, so they get uh, well, super user rights so they can do actually everything. They don't even know that they can do it, but they can do it. Um, when you use process mining, we can actually see if people did do anything, because it's not good if people can do everything, but when they don't do it, it doesn't really give a problem for the financial statement. Um, here you see, um, well, it's not really uh, clear the picture, I see. Um, but this is, uh, this says uh, board data, which is, um, we are checking it. Uh, and this is Uitbetaal, uh, which is paying a uh, bill. What you see is, uh, here is the well, this is the first check, this is the second check. One of these went straight to payment, which is a kind of an odd situation because the controls say that they should check everything uh, double. Um, eventually, we, uh, uh, we talked with the client and they said, well, it went to this one, so it was checked, then it was sent back to uh, order, and then it goes to payment. So that was really an issue. Another one is this one. This is the payment. And if you get your repeating uh, steps in payment, that's quite a serious threat because that could suggest that a bill is paid twice, which shouldn't happen. Um, we checked it, this also again with the client and they told us uh, that it was a special case and that it really, did it, really didn't uh, affect the financial statement, which we of course checked and uh, it was correct. Um, then the important insights were gained um, on the actual process. So the client really saw what their process was and uh, where they needed to uh, put some extra controls in the uh, system. Uh, well, as we discussed, deviations and uh, eventually the 4 I principle was guaranteed. So we checked it and everything uh, where a 4i principle should be uh, applied, uh, it was applied. Then the third and final uh, case. Um, this was at a mortgage provider. Um, it was a client of uh, our in the financial services um, and we needed some extra insight in how the process worked because 
uh, in well in some of the cases uh, we had some trouble in, in understanding how uh, the process was uh, going. Um, the biggest challenge here was that the process was outsourced. So we uh, were working for our client who had their process outsourced to a third party. So we needed to get data from the third party. However, since we were the auditor, we couldn't contact the third party directly. So we had to go via the client. And with that man in the middle, it took quite a long time to get the right data because there were some translation errors and eventually we got the data. Then we found out that the technical login was different than the login uh, of the technical login was different from the process steps that the uh, employees thought they were doing. So uh, and sometimes the technical login had one description for something but was five steps in the uh, process flow. So you wouldn't really see that controls were performed but they were performed, but they were logged. And then the incomplete logging, um, we also discussed this a little bit during our workshop. Uh, the logging was not all, of, well, it appeared not always to be correct because uh, dates were missing or uh, activities where uh, the first time someone had to do it, of actually in 99% of the times a person did it, and sometimes it was done by the system, which is, quite strange. Um, so we discussed this with the client and they told, well, if a, um, if people get a, uh, ask for a uh, mortgage, it's valid for uh, 30 days or 60 days. When this uh, time period uh, is uh, expired, they, um, the system automatically shuts down the process and sends it back to uh, the back office. So that, and that's why it looked like it was incomplete, but it wasn't. Um, this is the process. Um, what I didn't mention yet is it was a uh, it's an online mortgage provider. So actually, the expectation was everything is going to be uh, well. All uh, mortgages are. Uh, done by the uh, internet, but then we saw that there were two starting points which uh, kind of was a shock because we didn't really know it, but they are using, uh, uh, well, offices in the Netherlands which also sell uh, mortgages. So you got one hand is automated and one part is uh, done by hand, which uh, took all kinds of different controls which we didn't realize. We also did a little bit with the uh, time uh, stamps because uh, in this case we had a begin time and an end time uh, of the activities so we could see how long people did uh, about a control. But what you see here is um, the dossier check. So when uh, mortgage is required they have to have uh, as well um, Things, you have to submit things like your income, your passport, and all the kinds of papers. Um, what we saw in this process was that sometimes, well, it's not really readable, but it says 10 and a half hours. <coughs> it sounds like, oh, somebody has to check all those documents, it's fine. But what we saw in the logging was that sometimes the <coughs> check only took five seconds, which seems like a very short time if it, the average is 10 hours. Uh, so we went back to uh, the client and they said, well, that's because uh, you can see here is that um, this is waiting and things get go back to the client and has to, uh, well, when the dossier is not really completed, they need to give some extra uh, documents. Let's say someone forgot their uh, copy of the passport. If that's the only thing, people just have to see, oh, there's a passport, okay, it's good, then they can do it in five minutes, seconds. So it's not never the first time, it was five seconds, it was always the last step actually. And then the results, um, yeah well, uh, Paul had gained important insights in the growth flow, so they actually for the first time saw that there were two separate uh, flows into the system. Um, we looked at the process deviations and the quality of the control execution. 
Um, then the lessons learned, uh, as I showed at the beginning of my present. Okay, sorry, I didn't realize that. Um, well, we had a five-step program. Um, one of the first was time and data collection. Um, as I said, with the mortgage provider, it took quite a long time to uh, get the data. So if you want to do something, start as early as possible. Um, then the second, uh, download and analysis of the available data. Data quality is key. Um, without a good data quality, you well, you can do personal mining, but it will really say nothing. Um, then the first analysis of the result. Um, well, you get very beautiful process flows and uh, the interface between mid office uh, system and the data warehouse. Uh, always check if the logging, the technical logging, is the same as well the steps the client sees in their own uh, program. And then uh, process. Um, the insight for the financial audit is really uh, added value. Um, they really expect uh, from us that they get added value and we show them that with the visualization and everything it really helps. And that we can check segregation of duties and uh, the control quality. Uh, and then evaluate with the customer. You can always have different interpretations. Um, clients don't always see where you're coming from and you need to always keep talking. Uh, then the data fields um, sometimes are not always used or uh, used different. Uh, you really need to uh, have some system understanding and uh, the technical process flow yeah, well, it could be dif different so do uh, evaluate that with the client. And I believe I'm um, already way over time. So. I think, I think uh, let's ask one question and take the, the, the time for, for one or two questions while we, we are changing for, for the next presentation. So thanks, thanks a lot, Eddie, because of all the time. saying that this is an exploratory process finding is essentially as exploratory you don't know what to, what to expect the old thing is it's not exploratory you know what to expect so how, how do these two techniques meet in the middle uh, well is it yeah. okay <laughs> um well it actually, that's true, because all things shouldn't be exploratory, because you uh, expect that the client knows what their process is, and that when you do, uh, what we normally do is a walkthrough with the client. So we uh, sit down with someone who uh, does the process uh, as his day-to-day -day work, and they tell us, well, uh, I'm doing this, and that, and that. And, that. and we uh, use also the process document documentation that the client has to determine what the process flow is. Um, we then uh, uh, draw uh, uh, our own process flow, uh, determine with the client if that is right. But as we saw in, for example, the mortgage uh, uh, case, sometimes the client doesn't know their own processes that well. And in short, as auditor, you really have to rely on what your, your client tells you. So sometimes it's better, and especially with new clients, to do it with process mining, so you can actually explore more of the process and see what they uh, are doing. Um, this year we also did at one of our leasing clients um, the process mining assignment before they went to their walkthroughs, so they already can use uh, the information we got from process mining in the walkthrough with the client. So if the client says, well, uh, this is how our process works, and we show them, well, according to your logging, it's not how it's working, so please explain. So we're trying to get actually at the forefront of the audit uh, period so we can give our auditors more insight in the process before they start talking with clients. Is that a little bit of an answer? Yeah.